The Dodge Viper American Club Racer was designed to be the fastest street legal race car in the world. True to its purpose, the Viper ACR has achieved an astonishing 13 production track records to date. We've heard from ACR owners who'd like to achieve these track numbers themselves, and they can, simply by making slight adjustments to optimize the performance of the tires, suspension, and aerodynamics for each track, its conditions, and driver preferences. And that's why we're here, to walk you through the precise calibrations and adjustments you'll need to replicate the ACR's phenomenal winning streak, and maybe set some more records yourself. First things first, this is Jeff Reese. He knows the Viper aerodynamics better than anyone. Jeff, how might we prepare the ACR for the track? Well, before we head to the track, we need to install our key aero components. That's the front splitter extension and diffuser strake extensions. We'll also want to remove our hood vents and extractors. Our goal with these adjustments is to maximize downforce and improve aero balance. When it comes to the rear wing, keep in mind, this feature has a profound effect on handling balance. We recommend no adjustment be made to the rear wing unless it's done by an accomplished driver very familiar with the vehicle. For example, an experienced driver specifically looking to reduce aero understeer could change the wing setting from hole position two to hole position one. Next, let's take a look at shock adjustment. Your ACR arrived stock at street ride height, so it'll need to be adjusted for track ride height, which lowers the center of gravity and moves the splitter and diffuser closer to the ground where they'll be more efficient. We recommend you start with a front ride height of 4.0 inches. The rear ride height should be 5.5 inches. This will give you a good baseline amount of rake and sufficient shock travel. Then we'll check the corner balance on scales to within 10 pounds of cross axle weight to ensure symmetric handling. While we're at it, we'll make sure the sway bar is disconnected before these adjustments and we'll reconnect it when we're done. Then recheck the corner weights and frame heights. Finally, let's check the alignment and the bump steer. A good starting point would be 2.8 degrees negative camber with 0.08 toe out per side for the front and 1.8 degrees negative camber with 0.11 degrees toe in in the back. This will provide consistent, stable performance and optimize tire wear at most tracks. Now, those might not be the final readings, but like I said, they're a darn good place to start. As for bump steer, once our ride height and alignment are set, the bump steer should be as close as possible to zero as the suspension goes through its travel to provide predictable and symmetric handling. Now those are our basic pre-track adjustments. Naturally, you'll also want to check your engine oil and tire pressure, bleed the brake fluid if necessary, and make sure you've got sufficient brake pad thickness and tire tread. Then grab your helmet and get yourself to the track. We've got Tom O'Dell here at Waterford Hills Road Racing Track to show us how we go about setting new production car records. Tom aims for 34 to 35 PSI front and rear when the tires are hot and no less than 26 to 27 PSI when they're cold. The tires can debead from the wheel if they drop below 25 PSI and they can gain over 10 PSI during an outing due to temperature change. So whatever you do, don't start with a cold street pressure of 36 PSI or they're gonna hit 50 PSI or more once they heat up. Overfilled tires lose grip, and you're not here to spin your wheels. Now Tom's gonna to look at damper adjustments. Tom generally starts with the front compression setting at position seven and the rebound position at five. The rear should have a compression setting of five with rebound at position three. We're all set with that. So now let's see how those settings work out for Eric on the track. As soon as Eric gets back, Tom checks tire pressure on the instrument cluster. He wants to see the tire pressure readings while the tires are still hot. How's it feel out there, Eric? How's the car handling? Well, we saw a few bumps, but the suspension handled them real well. The main thing is there's a little unwanted understeer in high-speed turns. There are a few things we can do to combat understeer. First, we can increase rate by raising the rear ride height. This increases the roll axis inclination, which will reduce mechanical understeer. The effect is similar to adding a stiffer rear anti-roll bar. More rake also shifts the aerodynamic balance forward, reducing aero understeer. The change in aero balance will be most noticeable on high-speed turns. So, more rake decreases understeer, less rake promotes understeer. The adjustable compression and rebound settings provide another way to compensate for understeer. And it's quicker than a rake change, so let's try that first. 
If time adds one click of compression in the rear and removes one click of rebound from the front, that'll do a bit to reduce the understeer air just experience. Turning better, Eric? Much better, much better. Excellent. And that's how we optimize performance. We make small incremental changes based on driver feedback. We've only scratched the surface here. You can adjust the Viper ACR to match the capabilities and preferences of the driver. Keep in mind that lots of factors impact a vehicle's performance, from track layout and track surface to weather conditions and driving style. Always record any incremental adjustments you make and note how these changes interact with other conditions to affect performance. The challenge and the fun lie in finding the best setup for a particular track and driver on any given day.